A very emotional bond hearing today in South Carolina involving a student who has murdered her alleged killer uh, in court. It's all via Zoom. Uh, and, and this is it's really a tough case, very emotional, which is unusual for a bond hearing. Julie Grant has the story tonight. I was in shock and disbelief and numb. There are no words to describe the immense pain his actions have caused our family and friends. He brutally kidnapped and murdered my daughter, my baby. He locked her in the car without any way to escape and tore her apart. He stole my chance of even identifying her body in the morgue due to the amount of torture he put her through. Your Honor, I beg of you, I plead of you to deny bail. No one deserves to lose their sister, daughter, or friend in the merciless way that I lost Sammy. No one deserves to constantly relive finding out that one sister was violently taken from them. And my mind constantly replays that moment when my dad called sobbing as my knees buckled under me and I fell to the floor. One way to prevent another person from this constant nightmare that is now our life is to ensure that this man remains incarcerated and without bail. This monster kidnaps and brutally murdered the love of my life. It wasn't accidental, nor a product of panic. It was orchestrated and carried out by a truly evil human being. I ask you today, justice be served for my beloved Sammy. I ask that you deny his bond request as he is a danger to everyone around him. What will happen when his thirst to kill strikes again? Judge, you would have loved her. She made everyone smile and laugh. This monster animal has taken Samantha Josephson away from all of us. To stab someone over 30 times and brutally kill a defensive 21 year old, non-threatening female is a monster, a danger to kill again. Knowing him coming up and basically spending most of our time together even after he um, left college and the goals that he set, had set for himself, the things that he wants out of life uh, does not remotely come close to uh, uh, alleged charges that he's being accused of. We stand behind him 100% because we do believe that he is innocent. We do believe that he's not capable of even doing such um, what he's being accused of. Um, we do ask the court for mercy. We do um, send our prayers to the family and we can't remotely imagine what they're going through. On, I'm the mother of Nathaniel Rowland and like my oldest son has said, there's no way that he could have done this, what they're accusing him of. As a child, he loved everyone. He gets along with everyone. He do what he can for everyone. He's a very respectful man. And I, I can't see my child do anything like that, harm anyone. He never have harmed anyone, never. And I thank you all so much for hearing me. I've um, listened to um, everyone this morning, the officers, um, the state, the defense, um, this court makes a finding for purposes of this hearing that the defendant presents a danger to the community. And for that reason, the court denies the defendant's motion for bond at this time. I don't know if I've ever seen a bond hearing quite like that. Let me bring in Julie Grant. Julie, um, you know, we're in this strange world of, of doing things on Zoom, but to me it was more powerful, more intimate, because you had everyone talking about their loved ones from their own homes. I've never seen anything like this. You're right there. And, you know, and we hear a lot about, oh, Zoom takes away some of the emotion. 
today is evidence that it certainly does not. You could feel the emotion on both sides of this case from members of the family on both sides. And her honor was so patient to listen to everyone and hear everyone's supporting arguments, if you will, what was given by those people closest to the victim in this case and closest to the defendant in the case to support the legal arguments made by both sides. And at the end of the day, Vinny, you heard her honor uh, deny bond, of course, because of the severity of these charges. Uh, we're talking murder charges, kidnapping charges, um, and a, a very, very violent death. Uh, this young lady was stabbed around 30 times. Uh, and you heard in the piece uh, her mother say the, the wounds were just so brutal. The family wasn't even able to go to the morgue to make that identification. It had to, been, had to have been done another way uh, to spare them that uh, just dreadful sight. Uh, a, a young girl who had such a bright future ahead of her as well. She was on track to graduate from the University of South Carolina and planned to attend law school in the fall, Vinny. Do we know what's uh, coming up next, the uh, you know, next court date, trial date, and, and what we're looking at? Yes. Uh, there's going to be another date set. They didn't announce it during the hearing today, but they're looking at September. We do know that things are on hold in terms of a jury trial. And in this case has not been scheduled yet for a jury trial, but the court system wouldn't even be able to hear one until at least September. And that's still a maybe. They said COVID-19 has really slowed things down. And in this case, with the evidence being so voluminous, I spoke to uh, the deputy solicitor, April Sampson, and she really told me how so much forensic evidence was obtained. That's part of the reason why it's gone from last March until this point. Uh, so, of course, we're going to keep following it very, very closely and keep you posted on the next date when we know when that is, Vinny. All right. Julie Grant, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate thank it. We'll you. continue to track that case.